Hello and welcome back to another lesson of uh, skill acquisition on the Microsoft Excel application. Today I would just um, like us to take a look at the review tab and the various grooves and what um, you can use the various buttons or functions for. So uh, first of all, take a look at the proofing group. Within this proofing group, we have three buttons or commands, which is the spelling. That is, if you want to check for errors. So if you if you made mistakes in regards to the content within the worksheet, after you finish with everything, you need to review what you've done. Hence, a reason for coming to the review tab, or you give your workbook to an individual to also have a laser second op opinion on what you've done, then the person would have to use the review tab to more or less add comments and delete comments, but you will get to that shortly. So if I click on spelling, automatically the system will go through it and tell me that, oh, okay, do you want to continue checking at the beginning of the sheet? I'll click on yes. It goes through and it tells us that you are good to go. So assuming I come in here and I spell come as C-M-E, then I come to spelling. I want to go back to the beginning. Then the system flags the CME that I type. So it gives me suggestions. What do you want to do? Did you mean to type come or C-H-E or me, at me, Q? So it gives you possible suggestions. Me, C-O-E. Then it is using um, United States format. So if you don't like United States formats, you can pick that up what? Uh, United Kingdom. So, but if you still insist that what you type is correct, you can add it to the dictionary so that the system will not flag it the next time you try to proofread what you've done. So basically that is it. So if you, you still want to correct it, you just click on, okay, I, I, I meant come, then you click on change. So once you do that, automatically, um, let's see. So spell check complete, you are good to go. So it corrected that. Then we have um, Tesaros, which um, helps you suggest another way in which you can write a particular word. So as you can see from the screen tip, so once you click on it, the system will automatically open and it will give you some suggestions. So, okay, come originate, originate and derive. So the ways that you type and you want other ways of, you know, getting your point across to the people you are presenting your worksheet or workbook to, you can use some of these tools for that particular exercise. And with this, you don't need internet access for that. Then you also have workbook statistics. So once you click on workbook statistics, more or less like uh, you checking for the information within a document, how many paragraphs, how many lines. So in Excel, you can also do same where it tells you where the sheet ends at E71. So E71, so there should be something there. Then cells with data is 215. We have zero tables, one formula in the workbook that we are dealing with. This workbook contains three sheets, cells with data 215, table zero formula. So it just gives you a general overview of what is contained within the workbook. Then we can also look at uh, checking for accessibility. So we keep it inclusive so that people with disability can easily relate to what you've created. So the system is telling you that, okay, there are some accessibility issues. The system automatically gives you the default sheet name. So it is telling you to probably make some changes to the names of this sheet that you've created. So if I close it, I come back, I change it to FITTS1, FITTS2, FITTS3. Three. Then I go back to check accessibility again. So no accessibility issues found. So before you present or send any final work that you've done, you need to also come to the review tab and make sure everything is is, is, is perfect. Good. Then we also have, um, let me close the panes for that. We also have the smart lookup. 
so if i click on smart lookup i should definitely select a particular word okay so i did not do that so i'm going to close it so i click on smart lookup come and it tries to load and the problem is i'm not connected to the internet so i'm going to connect to the internet uh, my table net so once it's connected i'll try again then we'll see what happens so smart lookup it will take you to the internet and even give you some um meaning to the word that is selected so basically so come is a verb a preposition it gives you synonyms and all of that so you can actually study certain words and it, this also applies to microsoft word so you don't need to have a physical dictionary with you or you don't need to open a web browser to find synonyms and antonyms of a particular word so once you come to the review tab it is for that particular purpose and you need internet access to use this particular feature then we also have we also have a um, translate so with a translate with a translate um, we have um, you converting it from probably English to French and stuff like that so if I go to translate then I'll click on yes so to translate your document text will be sent over the internet in a secure format to microsoft or a third-party translation service provider do you want to proceed so you say yes so come so what are we translating it from english to which particular language so once it comes up okay from english to korean this is how come is spelled so if i come in here and i select slovenian this is how they spell their come so let's say it's searching it's searching then it comes okay so we need to get more languages okay so this is pre -sell. then you can insert it to change it if we want to change it to french okay so let's go to french let's search for it come okay okay come come okay it's not really getting it for us Let, let's go to german coming okay so these are various ways you can you can use the translate feature of the review tab so it applies to uh, microsoft word as well so when you open microsoft word you see some similarities over there okay so let's um, look at the comment group so once you send your workbook and uh, i feel that ah what does this actually mean because i don't have an understanding of this particular value then i'll just click to add a comment so i'll just click on it once i click the username of the machine will be automatically assigned to the comment so if I go to file, I come to options. Now I need to go to file, I go to info. So the info will give us the author, which is the username for this particular computer. So if your username is Kojobotio, when you click on new comment, you see Kojobotio here. So what I'm going to do is, um. kindly explain this to me that's it so once i add a comment i save the workbook and send it to the owner of this particular workbook that person will know that okay mr so and so assign this comment then i can also come in and assign another comment so i'll say okay um then i'll just type blah 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 okay this is the total sales value for the promo motion for the promotion as simple as that so once um i, I send it back to him he would also know what i added so you can actually hide a comment if you don't want it sticking out on the worksheet so you can hide it and if it's hidden and you see something like this at the bottom no top right corner of a particular cell then it's suggest that there is a comment in there 
I can also come in and find another word comment. So you just type whatever you need to type. So if you want to navigate, I want to hide. If you want to navigate, you use the next and previous to go through the comment. Next and previous to go through the comment. Then after you solved that particular issue with whatever comment that was attached, you can delete it. Then you say go to the next comment then you delete all comments. So this is how you navigate through the comments and delete them one after the other. Then let's um, also look at the last group, which is the protect group. So protect group basically uh, talks about protecting the worksheet. So just this worksheet or protecting the entire workbook. So all the sheets in it within this particular window group work, workbook. So in protecting worksheet, we have so many ways of doing that. You can decide to protect certain cells or allow for people to enter values into certain cells. Also allow them to delete, to do so many things with, the, with this particular worksheet. So if I click on protect worksheet, these are what we can allow users of this worksheet to do. So they can select locked cells and select unlocked cells so let me explain what locked cells mean by default the system automatically locks all the cells within this workbook or within a worksheet so if i click on protect sheet i'll click on uh, deselect locked unlock then i'll click on ok without any password so you see it becomes very difficult selecting any of the cells because I did not give the user that permission to do that. So I'll go back and unprotect. So what I'll do is I'll click here to select the entire worksheet. Then I'll go back to my home tab, come to the font dialog box. So once I click on the font dialog box, there is protection tab here. So once I come here, you see it locked is default. So what I can do is to what? unlock. So once I unlock, automatically everything becomes unlocked and I have the ability to select any cell that I want after the protection. So I'll go back again, lock it once again, and only select the part where I want people to edit. So I only want you to edit Monday through to Sunday. The rest of the data, you need not to touch it, even if I'm away. So what I need to do is I'll go to my dialog box launcher for the font group, click on the protection, then I will deselect lock. So it's been unlocked now. Then I'll go back to my review tab. Then I'll come to what? Protect sheet. So I'll say users have the ability to select unlocked cells. That is all that you can do. So I'll need you to look at all these options, practice with it, and see how it's going to pan out for you. So I'm going to lock it with a password, let's say A on the keyboard. I'll hit OK. Re-enter password A. I'll hit OK. So once I do that, you see, as I move, I'm only within the range which was unlocked. I cannot do anything to whatever is here. All I can do is to change the values within the region that has been unlocked for me to use. So basically that is it. So if I try deleting this, you see delete is active, good. So we can also protect the workbook where we do not allow people to tamper with other worksheets within the workbook. So if I click on protect workbook, I'm protecting the structure. So A is the password, A again is the password, it's been protected. So let's see what happens. You cannot delete, you cannot rename, you cannot move, you cannot insert. So you are limited to what is available because of the protection that has been added. Then we can also allow the editing of what certain ranges. So you can, when you unlock by a password, when sheet is what protected. So you can select it and, and do justice to that. So what I'll do is I'll click on protect it. I'll come back again, click here, and also unprotect it. Then we can also try out this, um, allow edit ranges. So I'll need to add a range. So what is the range name? 
let's say uh, why you can't edit so refers to which of the cells then I'll come and select this particular range so from 11 to 23 so range password is a so what are the permissions so if let's say you are on a, a particular server where you use SharePoint to manage your workbook you can just add people then give them the various permissions so we'll just leave it at this then I'll click on OK. I'll re-enter password. I'll click on OK. So this is the range you have permission to edit because by default, the system is what? Protected. Then I can what? Protect the what? Sheet. So you can only select what? Unlocked cells. So once I do that, click on OK. So if I want to unprotect, okay. So unprotect sheet. That I'll go like A that you can edit. So basically, that is all that there is to know about the review tab. So, what I'll need from you is to just um, practice on the, I think, five, five tasks that is available for the review tab. So, you get that um, from the Google Classroom page, it's, it's just five of them. So it's about comments, adding comments and deleting comments, yeah. But you can still um, work on, try finding out and playing around with all that we discussed and see how best you can leverage that as you use the office application for your work. Uh, thanks very much for the time and God bless you.